Good morning, good morning, good morning, or actually we're almost at lunchtime. Well, thank, uh, thank you everyone for coming for another successful year. I think we've had some really good information. Now we've made it a tradition to take our summary slide from last year and make this as our first slide for this year. It keeps us accountable for the forecast that we make, so you may not invite me back next year. <laughs> so uh, let me go through some of these. Last year I talked quite a bit about what was going on in personal income. And as if you recall, personal income post-recession at the U.S. level kept increasing, but in Kansas and Wichita, it wasn't. There was a further and furthering gap between the two. Our forecast last year was that we thought increases in income, and I'm happy to say last week we heard that the first half of 2016, uh, income was rising in Kansas. It was the ninth fastest growing state. But we also said in our forecast last year that we thought that consumption would be muted for several reasons that I've listed on here. And unfortunately, that has also happened as we haven't seen the robustness that we'd want in the taxable retail sales and is it continuing to impact the state. Another thing we said last year from the business side, they were very optimistic. They said the marketplace is looking so much better that they were thinking about other things, investing more. However, when we started talking about that investment, we weren't really sure if that investment would materialize because of uncertainty and because of overall weak growth in the Kansas economy. And there was some, some conversations about some of that investment actually spilling over to surrounding states. Now, <clears throat> When you look at investment over this last year, you've seen some investments in not only commercial property and multifamily, but really when you go down to the business side, I think in my conversations with businesses, we've kind of been a little latent in that, in that investment. I don't see really strategic investments going on that's gonna make longer term growth for Kansas. So unfortunately, I think that it remains a concern. Now, we talked about the manufacturing side and expectations, we had pretty zero growth in that side and our expectations have somewhat met at the net level. I'm gonna mix, uh, skip the next one for a second and go to the Wichita forecast. We said Wichita's gonna grow by 1.1% this year. And if you look over the last several months, we've been bouncing a little bit around that. By the time we get to the end of this year, our forecast for Wichita is gonna be pretty right on that forecast right there for 1.1%. Now for Kansas, however, that forecast was not met. Now one of the reasons why that was not met, and we told you that last year, was the bullet point right above that, was the oil and gas. That time we were thought it was too speculative to know not only the direct impacts, but it was really the indirect impacts that was gonna, that was gonna affect this state and the employment numbers. So that definitely brought it down and we knew it was gonna come down, we just didn't know how much. Now if you look at the August numbers, which is a, a brief survey, a survey of only a few companies across Kansas, it says that we declined by 0.6%. Right? So that's not a very good number. We're declining by that. Now this number tends to get revised up. There's been plagued with problems at the national level. And we've seen a lot of problems with that number even in Kansas. It's typical for it to revise and we'll see some revisions. Even if it doesn't get revision, we typically will add more jobs and I think we'll come closer to a zero growth. If we do some revisions, we'll see that up a little bit higher from that. All right, back to the future. Right? This is a classic 80s movie that I'm sure a lot of you have seen, and the DeLorean, which is very well beloved. I'm gonna use this to take us back in time to give us a perspective of some of those economic cycles that we've gone through and how that might be important to us today. And I'm doing this at a much broader level. The reason why we had talked about oil and gas and agriculture and manufacturing is because of those very segments. Now this is gonna be our flux capacitor, if you will. If you remember the flux capacitor, that's what actually brought them back in the past. So we're gonna look at this for a second because I'm gonna come back to it a few times. This is the gross domestic product for Kansas. This is the value of goods and services being produced. And that black line is the year over year change. Anything over the zero line means it was positive. Even if the line is coming down, it's still positive growth. Now we added in these gold bars. Those gold bars compares Kansas to the US. So this gives us context. This tells us not only did we grow, but did we grow faster or slower than the US in any given time period? And the gray bars are recessions. Now I wanna take you back a little further in 1965 and talk about the structure of the economy. At that point in time, manufacture accounting for 28% of the overall US economy, but you only see 19% for Kansas economy. 
When you look at this, this really tells us that Kansas in 1965 was relatively more concentrated in agriculture and mining and not really manufacturing. Now let me forward 50 years. And when you go that, as most of you know, the service sector has continued to expand. But you might not have realized that the contribution of manufacturing at the US level has declined more than half. And in, in Kansas, it only declined by a fraction. Right? We have the stickiness in manufacturing here. We have higher skilled labor. We have innovation and technology. And we have proximity to raw materials. Think about cattle being beef and dog food, things like that. Now, when you look at the structure of the economy today, what does this tell us about Kansas? Well, now, relatively, we're much more a agriculture and manufacturing state. All right, now let me go to our flux capacitor here in the first time period. We're going to do three of these time periods. This one's the late 60s and 70s. Now, I want you to look at the black line right there in the late 60s, and you'll see that Kansas is growing just about 3% or more per year, right? Which in typical years is pretty good. 3% is a growing uh, economy. And if you look at the gold bar, however, Kansas is not growing nearly as fast as that is of the U.S., well, the U.S. went into a recession in 1969. This is mostly because of high inflation and deficit from the Vietnam War. Uh, and then when you start looking at the growth in Kansas, we actually started expanding right into the recession. After the recession, we were expanding, expanding faster than the U.S. economy. This doesn't really fit some of those thoughts that we have about the economy, does it? doesn't it? There's some common beliefs that we have about the Kansas economy where we think that there's going to be tradition to it, but there really isn't. So let's look and examine that a little closer to see what happened. So in agriculture, in 1969, when you look at the value of goods and services, it starts increasing and peaks in 1975. So what was going on? Well, these are broader macroeconomic events. So if you think of what happened in Russia, Russia had severe drought at that period of time. They're a big uh, provider in the grain market. They started having reduced production, which brought up prices, and we have more demand for what was going on in, in Kansas and our goods, right? It was bringing up the prices and the values. And then you also have a culmination of a lot of government policies that made it a real prime time to be in agriculture. So you have, the, you have a big drive up right during, uh, after that recession, strengthening the Kansas economy. Let's move over to oil and gas, right? We are in energy state at this point in time. The US goes into recession in 1974 because of an uh, oil embargo from, from um, OPEC, right? That actually has an inverse effect for Kansas. And oil here, you see oil starts driving up in right before 74 or 75. And going up into the 80s, it's driving up more production, more value, goods and services being produced. Now let me move over to manufacturing. Remember, at this point in time, we didn't have a relative concentration compared to the US. However, we did have some strong manufacturing sectors here. In this period of time, you see uh, aerospace continuing to expand. You see machinery equipment across Kansas expanding. And you also see food processing expanding in Kansas. Think of and the reason why it's changing is because of world diets. Think of Twinkies and stuff like that. So let me back up and give you a perspective. What happened in the 1970s? Well, this was the strongest point in time for Kansas over this entire time period. Now, if you were to really go back in time and look at Kansas, anywhere in Kansas, this is the time you probably wouldn't come back. You'd hear people around the state saying, far out, and can you dig it, right? This is when people are really exciting. Now let me move forward to the next time period, which is the 1980s and the early 1990s. <clears throat> now the 1980s ends up being the, the yin or the negative to the yang, the positive, right, of the 1970s, or the biff to the Marty McFly. <laughs> so the, what do you, when you look at the black line again, what happens to GDP? Well, it actually comes down to about 0.2% at an annual basis but it maintains about a 2% over this time period. We kind of settle into this slower growth uh, economy right there. The US goes into recession in 1980. There's not really one specific reason. There's actually several reasons that was uh, influenced in the recession at that time. And in 82, we have the um, sovereign debt crisis of Latin America, which has a little bit more impact on the Kansas economy. 
So let me dig in those sectors with, with you for a second. First, we go into agriculture. And as, as Michael just talked about this, the same thing that made the environment perfect for the 1970s, which made the farm crash for the 1980s. And it takes 15 years, really, for the agriculture economy to recover. You move over to oil and gas, we peak in, 19, or in eight, uh, 1981. That's the top peak. By the way, this is inflation adjusted, so this is the, the top point uh, for agriculture or for oil. By the way, agriculture's top peak of this entire period was back in 1970. So what happened? So we see that oil and gas is slowly coming down. Why? Because we're having de decreasing production of wells. But then we get into the Persian Gulf War, which starts to bring oil and gas coming back up. You might just keep noticing this theme that the Kansas economy is heavily influenced by global events, other things going on that affect some of our core sectors. Now, in manufacturing, there's some interesting stuff going on. We have a couple uh, booms and busts within uh, aerospace, and, but there are more interesting things going on here is what's going on in the supply chain in manufacturing. We have a deepening of the supply chain. Innovation is really going down into some of these core manufacturing sectors across Kansas. And we see a lot of the synergy that's going on between manufacturing companies. Now this is something very different than what we're talking about at the national level. We're seeing some strengthening of manufacturing here because of the skill sets. All right, now when you kind of look over the time period, the 80s really, really settled into that slow growth more consistent expectation of the economy. Now, I haven't been talking about professional services, but I will make a comment. You know, professional services was expanding. Unfortunately, because we go into this different point in time for Kansas, we also start seeing some outsourcing of key professional services. Not really today as we're talking about it, but we're seeing it back in this point in time, going to Oklahoma City and to the Missouri side of Kansas. Now, if I was gonna put this in context, how do you take away the, this? Think back to the movie. And if you think at the very beginning, when we meet Marty McFly in the movie, he's actually doing pretty well, right? But his parents' marriage is struggling, and we also hear about his uncle being in jail, right? The Kansas economy is doing, uh, when you look at doing well because we're growing, it's just we have some fundamental issues underlying that that are you know, slowing our economy down. All right, let me go to the last time period, which is the late 1990s and all the way up to the, uh, today. These bring on the more events that you recall. We have the dot-com bubble, which affects the U.S., doesn't really affect us here. We have 9-11, which does affect, affect aerospace. And then you get over to the housing bubble, the financial crisis, and the subsequent global slowdown, which is affecting us. When you look at what's going on in GDP and what's going on in the Kansas economy, this is the first time in 20 years where Kansas actually has more than one year growing relatively faster than the U.S. So what are the components for that? Well, I can tell you it's aerospace, it's oil, and it's manufacturing. And somewhat to a lesser extent, we didn't have the, expect, the speculation in the housing boom, so, so we didn't have the fallout from uh, the banks and on the real estate market and on construction. So let me go in and dig deeper into this one. You see, in agriculture, well, in agriculture, as Michael's talking about, you start seeing cattle be really being uh, coming up and, and production of beef in this time period. Uh, but the, when you look at the commodities, they're pretty modest growth until we get the ethanol boom and then the subsequent recession, which was a unique period of time to bring those prices up and production up for us. Move over to oil and gas, just as we were talking about earlier. You look at what's going on there. Well. Fracking had been around for a while. It was just the right environment for that to come back and to bring Kansas back onto the stage here, right? It took a global supply and prices of oil before fracking was the right environment to come back up. Now, it's important to note, because this is inflation adjusted, that oil today is only 40% of its previous peak. You move over to manufacturing, it continues to grow. It continues to grow going into the recession. The reason why Kansas economy was growing, it was primarily because of aerospace. Aerospace was producing quite a bit, and it helped us right when we went into the recession. It came down, it's kind of leveled off, and, and has done a little bit better recently. But as it was coming down, that in the industrial machinery manufacturing, farm equipment, oil equipment, that started coming up because it was matching those other two sectors, which helped balance out manufacturing. Right? And when you start looking at what's going on today, because that is starting to come down, 
you start seeing other really small sectors, maybe emerging sectors across Kansas. These are manufacturing of high-end goods for a U.S. domestic consumer. Now, some of these businesses have been around for a while, like boats, but we also have other ones who are doing motorcycles and home decor that's continuing to pop up around the state that's using some of that same high-skilled labor, but is emerging across Kansas. All right, so we back up. What do I want you to take from the, away from this? Well, every single recession is unique, and we can't really have this predictability about some of them. There's unique global factors and macro factors that are affecting the Kansas economy, right? It goes more to what's going to agriculture, mining, and manufacturing. It does not have a lot to do with the political environment, although that does impact it. These are broader effects that, that, that uh, impact our state economy. All right, now let me switch gears and talk about what business and community leaders were talking about the Kansas economy. Now, I will tell you, I want you to look at your program. This is the first year we put it all in there and also on the app. You have the full survey responses from the last several years, and you can look at it in more detail. I'm not going to go into as much detail up here. We asked businesses their concerns about the economy. And you know what's interesting? When you back up in 2009 and 10, 11 when we did this, we talked about their concerns. There was a lot of uncertainty, and there was a lot of fear behind those concerns. And those concerns changed every single year. The last two years, we're seeing more consistency between their concerns. They're not changing very much. This is an environment where we've lived through a lot of this, and we kind of have an idea or, or we've calculated in the risks of some of those concerns out there. So let me only talk about a couple of them. The first one is U.S. competitive position. By U.S. competitive position, businesses are saying they're worried about the value of the dollar in the, in the global marketplace. Now, the value of the dollar in the global marketplace, I have there in the black line, right? That's showing that the value of the dollar continues to increase. Look at what's going on in Kansas exports. Overall exports continue to go down. Now, some of that is the commodities. More recently, that's being impacted by the machinery and equipment. But the longer the value of the dollar stays up, the harder it's going to be for other manufacturing goods in Kansas because it's going to be more expensive in the global marketplace. When we talk to businesses. What else does this mean? Well, they're concerned about trade policy as we move forward. Right? As a commodity state, you know, we're thinking about and what happens there will impact a lot of the core sectors that we have. Now let me go down to the last one, the uh, local environment, and talk about skills. This wasn't the top one. I think this is the third ranked one of concerns. But there's an interesting thing going on there over the last few years. You back up three to four years ago when I asked businesses about hiring and what they were doing, they were thinking about the labor market as very contingent. I'm only going to hire right when I need them, right when the demand is, and I don't really want to train them right now. Last year, remember, we talked about that they weren't quite ready to hire in Kansas, but it was very surgical precision. They're trying to find high-skilled people, and they're willing to pay a lot more money for them just so they can plan for more growth in the long run. This year, when we looked and talked to them about what was going on in the labor market, they're ready to hire. The matter of fact, job openings continue to increase. It's just the matching of that labor is more of the problem today. And we actually heard that a little bit on the panels. How do I find the person? How do I attract them here? Right? We're getting to this tight labor market right now. And so it's making it harder and harder for businesses to find labor so they can keep up with the demand that's out there. All right, what's going on demand? Well, the majority of companies said that demand is about the same. And you see about 30-some plus said it was increasing. Now, how do you read this? Well, real demand continues to increase and increase. And we could be coming to a peak, or we could be leveling off at this top level here. Now, this is the same story you see at the national level, where demand is peaking. Profit is kind of peaking and leveling off. And there's some concerns that the US economy might be losing some steam in it, and we might be ready for another recession. Now, let me be clear, most economists say there's only about a 20% chance of a recession over the six to two next 12 months. I still want to put in more caution to Kansas businesses for the various reasons we talked about this morning. What's going on in oil and gas? What's going on in agriculture? I think we need to put a lot more caution, and we need to be more careful because our economy is going to be affected very differently than the U.S. economy. All right, let me talk about the finances and the financial environment for business. Go to the left side and the gold bar. 10% of the businesses said that they increased prices to the consumer. Right? Last year, they were really increasing prices to the consumer. They were feeling really good. 
However, when you see about the material costs, the majority said yes, the material costs are coming up on them. They're increasing, right? This is becoming a tighter profit margin environment for Kansas companies. It's feeling a little bit heavier. What do they expect in the next six months? Well, you look at prices, some of them saying they're gonna increase it, but we have the same amount saying, well, and it's more, saying that prices are gonna increase on them. When I talk to them in the panels and saying, what does this really mean? How are you being affected? There was a lot of trepidation going on when we talked about the financial side of businesses. Some said, oh, it's not a problem, I can, tr I can push this on to the consumer. Others said, no, we're gonna to have to make it up in the volume demanded. And others had other kinds of comments of how they were gonna handle this idea of a little tightening of margins that going into the next year. Now, if you were Marty McFly, he would say, this is heavy. All right, let me switch to the other side of this, uh, this on the screen, and let's go to the labor market. This is a very different story, right? Unlike in the past when we kept talking about this laborless recovery, businesses here are hiring and they have no problem of increasing wages today, right? The wages are coming up. They're feeling a lot better. They're looking for labor. They're trying to bring wages up to attract labor. This is a very good point. And when you look at the back to the future going in the next six months, we're actually showing increases in employment and wages. And matter of fact, I would say this is extremely optimistic of companies, given that we're going to the presidential election and there's some uncertainty around that. So I would take this as, although the profit margins might be kind of looking a little bit more sticky than they were before, their outlook on hiring is looking better. So a lot of the support sectors, this might be good as, as more wages get out there, they will have more spending and might fuel some other components of the economy a little bit more than in previous years. All right, let's switch again and talk about our forecast. All right, if you remember the movie, when we first meet him, we have the, the original 1980s, which was strong and really good. And then you have these two alternative versions. One is when Biff takes control and destroys the town, and another one where Marty fixes some of those core underlying issues with his family and with his own character, and he has a more optimistic outlook. Now, before I go into our forecast, let me give you some context of what's going on in the national economy for the forecast. Moody's says that the uh, U.S. economy is gonna slow a little bit this year, going down to about 1.8% growth in employment and grow to about 1.6% next year. Now that's still a strong economy. They still think income is coming up and they think a little bit of uh, inflation is gonna be healthy. So they're very optimistic. Matter of fact, although they think that there's a tight labor market at the national level, we still have all these discouraged workers and other workers that could come back into the labor market. So they're, they're still a little optimistic about the, the potential growth for the U.S. economy. For the Kansas economy, the black line is based on that survey that I told you about. There's only a few businesses across Kansas, and what it was doing it was trending down, still positive, trending down until we get to this part of the year where we got down to point negative 6%. Now that's uh, pretty negative. Now our forecast historically has been based on this number, although it gets revised. Now we did two things. We, we did our normal forecast from that number and we also used another survey. The range that you see there, it reflects those two approaches. So when we take that traditional one, look at the bottom part of this gray range, right? What this assumes is that we've overcome some of the losses that we had in the oil and gas and what's been going on in agriculture. Those things have been fixed, especially machinery manufacturing in parts of the state, and that we're gonna start coming back up because income is expanding and the U.S. economy is growing, but it only comes to about a 0.7% growth next year, right? This is still an expanding economy, but a lot slower than the previous years you see in the history of Kansas. Now, the other survey that we used was from employer filings. This is something that's required. It's great accurate data, it's just really dated data. And so we used that one to forecast and we looked at the history. In some cases it was a better predictor for some sectors. So we used this overall and what that says is we still had some corrections for um, oil and gas and machinery, but it, it was a little bit more optimistic. Coming back to more of our normal trend that we have, maybe a little bit less than we've had the last couple years because again, we still have income and growth across the, the Kansas economy. The gold bar is a composite of the two and really gets to our forecast. So what are we saying? We're saying that Kansas is gonna grow about 0.9% this next year, which will be an improvement from this year, which is gonna be pretty stagnant, but uh, not nearly as strong as it was the last few years. 
All right, let me break this down by some sectors. First one's manufacturing. We didn't have a lot of expectations last year, and unfortunately because of the value of the dollar and some core sectors that we're in, I know we can't really be that, too, that optimistic for manufacturing. Matter of fact, we have some downside uh, risks in this thing that could even be negative going into this next year. When you go over the service sector, you see this decreasing growth in the service sector all the way down to now. Now, I looked at the most recent employment numbers, and one of the things it said is that banking uh, went down, declined. We saw management of companies went down, temporary agencies went down, retirement facilities were negative, right? And then we even see telecommunications going down. Let me walk through a few of those. On the banking side, we've talked about the last few years that there was mergers and acquisitions. We know there's a ag lending pressures out there. We know there's a low interest rate environment, but I think most of our banks were already known about a lot of this risk, and so I'm not so certain that the, the extreme negative losses that we had there are realistic, and I think those would probably be revised back up. The management of companies, right? This is things like Coke that continue to grow in Kansas. This is an expanding segment. Same thing with temporary employment agencies, which have been expanding. We're utilizing labor differently, right? Those had modest declines. I'm not so sure that the small decline we had now is necessarily a bad thing. They might just be right-sizing after a couple years of growth. When you get over to telecommunications, which is important to Kansas, right? You go to Kansas City and look at what Sprint, that's a business issue, the layoffs that they had there. That's not an industry issue. And so we're not gonna try to pull in a business issue in the forecast, so I'm not too concerned on that side, right? So I think when you start looking through some of the core sectors, I don't really have as much fear about it, and I think some of them will be revised up given the broadness of what's going on in our economy. And we have it uh, not coming nearly as strong as its history because of some of these other weaknesses in our core sectors. When you go over to the mining side and the construction side, well, we had to have some losses there. And we're showing that this is not going to be very positive over the next year, and there's still downside risks there. When you go over the construction of the mining and construction side, there's been a lot of optimistic news at the national level. So you kind of wonder what's going on here. And I've talked to the construction companies that serve not only Kansas market but, market, but other markets. And they weren't as optimistic about what's going on here because of what's going on in government funding for bigger projects for roads and schools and things like that, and the overall weakness of the economy. And given that manufacturing is not really expanding, we're not really looking to build more industrial buildings. So we have some not really strong expectations when you look over on the construction side. All right, when you look around the state, this is the first year to combine it like this. The very top left one is our forecast of of Wichita, Topeka, and Kansas City all together in one, one uh, unit. Now, when you look at those three MSAs, Kansas City is clearly the strongest growth set, uh, area of the, uh, the state, right? They have been growing pretty fast. We think that their growth will probably slow down, similar to that the U.S., but still a growing economy in the Kansas City area. Topeka, well, they had some losses in manufacturing. They had some losses in logistics. And they've had losses in government. Those losses are decreasing that wages, and that wages are impacting the support sectors, and particularly retail. It's the only major metro area that's actually hurting in the retail numbers, right? So their forecast for Topeka is going to remain pretty weak as we go forward. And we go to Wichita, which is actually in the far right side. We have some, some core issues within aerospace and some industrial machinery manufacturing that's affecting us. But we're really coming out pretty level on that. Given what's going on in the global economy and some of the detailed sectors, we're just not going to be as optimistic as we were in the last few years. We've settled in around that 1%. We're actually bringing it down to 0.8% for next year. Now, the middle graph is taking out Kansas City and Topeka and Wichita from the overall forecast. And that's where you see a lot of the ag and oil impacting the state. Now, we have it coming back up a little bit because of some broader issues. But uh, I think this is not really a very positive picture for the rest of the state. All right, earlier this year we did a population forecast. And what we said is that the state economy or the state population is going to grow about 0.4% a year over the next 50 years. It's following a similar trend to that of the US, which is a slowing population. Just we're growing slower than that of the nation. Right? When you look at the structures of this, so you look at the working age, uh, working age population, that's going to be somewhat of an issue for Kansas, particularly in the micropolitan and the rural areas. The working age population is shrinking in those locations. When you look at the retirement population, 
That's going to continue to expand and actually outpace the youth population by 2034. Now, there's a few reasons for that. We have the longevity of some of our the retirement population, but we have some outmigration of youth when they're finding new opportunities in other markets. We also have new opportunities for the uh, working age population where they give up in this market because it's so small and they're finding other places to go. When you look across Kansas, you'll look, see that Kansas City is the fastest growing region, then followed by the Northeast and then South Central. The majority of the state, however, is showing declines across Kansas. Now, given that we have this tight labor market and they have these metro areas looking and needing more labor, it's not necessarily too much of a bad thing, right? The commodity side of the economy is not needing labor, but these MSAs who are having a hard time attracting labor from other East Coast or West Coast is absorbing some of that labor, doing some of the training and, and building them up. So it's filling a need right now. What is our forecast? Unfortunately, I can't really put a strong forecast for Kansas because of what is going on in our core sectors, what's going on in agriculture. Now, on the oil side, you know, OPEC is, has an agreement to, to reduce some of the production, which might have a positive impact on oil and gas, but it's too speculative at this time. Uh, and when you go over to the manufacturing side, given the value of the dollar, I can't really see why we'd have really strong expectations there. Now, although I say that, I need to come back and say that businesses today are very optimistic, right? They are at new levels for profits. There are new levels for demand. They're feeling really good. And you should feel really good about that. They're ready to hire some more people. My concern is I'm not so sure all that optimism is going to necessarily spill over into a lot of more investments or wages or employment this next year. So again, our forecast for Kansas is about 0.9% and for Wichita, 0.8%, which is uh, a little bit slower than in the previous years. Now, if you're a, uh, a worker in this environment in Kansas or in Wichita, this is not a bad thing, right? Labor market is expanding. There's a lot more opportunities for you to find another job or to move up or to, to switch industries today, right? Wages are increasing, right? And businesses are feeling better. So you're seeing growth is just not nearly as strong as it was in the past. Now, our forecast for population was, again, 0.4%. Right? There's some issues behind there. And I think the structure of the state economy, not only from taxes at local governments across the state, but also government services and just the interaction of the, of the metro areas to the rural areas, those are some things that we're going to have to come back and have some deep conversations about because it, although we've known what's going on across Kansas, we just haven't really made a lot of real changes to the structure of the economy to interact with them in a different way, in a different meaningful way, or in a cost-effective way. This is something that we really need to come back and have a deep conversations about. With that, I want to thank you for coming, and I'm going to turn over the, mic the uh, podium and microphone.